Hello, today we are creating a mock-up in Canva. I'm going to be completely honest and let you know that I'm not the greatest with mock-ups. I'm not a designer, so font pairing and spacing and angles and white space and all of that, I don't know all of that technical stuff, okay? What I'm showing you is me trying to figure out how to do a mock-up. I saw some really pretty ones and I was like, huh, I bet I could do that. So that's what we're here to do today. I'm also leaving the link below to this exact file so you can use it as a template if you would like. I love templates because they save tons of time. So if you find yourself getting frustrated with working from scratch, definitely start with a template. Even if you have to pay a few bucks for it, time is money. I want you to save the stress, save the time, make the money. Now let's get started. I started with a US letter size and because I did it portrait instead of landscape, we're gonna go ahead and resize it. To resize your canvas, you're gonna go up to the resize button and then you can choose a custom size like I did, which is 11 by 8.5 inches instead of 8.5 by 11. And you can either choose resize, which resizes your current canvas, or you can choose copy and resize, which is going to make a new copy. So you can save this canvas and then you'll have a new one. We are going to use frames, which are inside elements. So click on elements and then scroll down to where it says frames and then find a frame you would like to use. I'm not going to do a whole lot of talking here. I'm just going to show you what I'm doing. If you aren't sure what some of these buttons do, head over to my 23 Canva hacks video because I cover everything you can imagine in that video and it's really awesome and helpful. You can start with a computer or cell phone image or you can just do the paper images if you have printables. If you're offering something online like digital coloring pages or a course, then the mobile or computer option that's a great way for your potential customers to see themselves using your product on their computer or on their phone. All of the sizing can be adjusted later, so sizing isn't really a huge issue. You just want to get the frames onto the page. I'm going to use this frame and change the frame color to a lighter color. You can also do a drop shadow, which I'm not covering in this video, but in my 23 Canva Hacks video, I showed a really cool way to do a drop shadow that I love. The reason I'm doing a frame is because I want to separate my page from the background. Now you could make this a colored background, but I'm really enjoying the light, bright, clean look for my mock-ups. So I'm kind of working through all of my bright, colorful ones and making them cleaner and more minimalistic because that sells better for me. It definitely depends on your niche, what you're selling, your vibe, your brand colors, all of that. Uh, but what I like about this is that everyone can enjoy it. If I put in too much of my own personality, it's going to be rainbows and polka dots and all of that. And then potential customers may not be able to see themselves using it as much, even if the product itself would have been helpful. So keep that in mind, keep your branding in mind, your message, your voice, and your vibe in mind while you're creating. These are very simple printables that I sell in my shop, so I'm going to use these as an example. To move this frame behind the computer, we're going to click position and then backward. And then instead of dropping another frame in, we're going to click duplicate so we get the exact same size of all of our pages. And then this little button to do the rotation. Now with this template that I'm going to give you access to use, you can adjust the size, the angle, everything here is movable. 
If you want something to be locked, be sure to select it and click the lock button so it can't move around. You can create as many frames as you would like. If you have a 100 page product, I don't think it's necessarily the best idea to spend the time to create a mock-up with all of those pages showing, especially because of how little they would be. I don't really see that that would deliver much value other than showing just the vast amount of pages you're offering. Uh, but I do feel like that would take a lot of time. So for me, I'm going to do something like maybe 5 to 15. I'm not sure where yet. Uh, but maybe 5 to 15 on the frames so I can display my principles, but it's not super overwhelming or cluttered. If you want to move everything all at once, select it all. If you want to resize everything all at once, select it all. Or you can just select a few of the items. I think this actually looks good with just five, but I'm going to keep going and show you a few more ideas that I have too. If you want to create another page, just press the duplicate page button and you can do this even when you're using my template. You can make your own inside of this canvas. Depending on the information that you include in your principles, you may want to make these frames a little bit smaller so nobody gets all of the information. Uh, but what I found is that if you're overlapping and you're making them this size, for the most part, nobody can just grab all the info. And honestly, if they wanted to do that, they're going to do it anyway, somehow, some way, right? So I'm not too secretive about what I put on my mock-ups. I know a lot of people are, but I'll show you exactly what's inside the product and then you get to decide whether you're going to buy it or not, right? If I do the mock-up like this, then there's no surprises. They see what's in the product, they buy it, what you see is what you get. You could do a cool mock-up where you have a few on one side, a few on the other, and then text in the middle. You kind of want to make sure the angles line up. Uh, again, I'm not the greatest with this naturally. Like, I just have to really try and practice. So if you notice any kind of misalignment on the template, again, it's a template, so you can fix it. You also have to realize that not everything has to be perfect. While your mock-ups are what sells your item and it is important to create them and do your best on them, I don't want you getting frustrated and giving up. I don't want you being flustered or spending hours and hours on your mock-ups. If you find that you don't enjoy this process, just grab some templates. Make sure the fonts you're using are available for commercial use. I have a few fonts that are only licensed for personal use. So you want to make sure you're using the right fonts. And in Canva, you'll see all of their fonts you can use for commercial. But if you're loading your own in, uh, which I talk about in another video, then you want to make sure that you have the right to use them in the way that you're wanting to. Pairing fonts, like a block font with a script font, is a great way to break up the text and make it a little more interesting. You want to make sure that the text is readable from a small image. So you don't want to put a ton on here or make it too small. If you need to space your letters out, you can use this spacer up here. Letter is going to space the letters out and then line height is going to make the height in between the lines bigger or smaller. I love that Canva has the alignment tools because I would be a hot mess without them. This could be a mock-up. It's not perfect, but I'm going to keep adding to it. But this itself uh, could be a mock-up if you fix the text. 
So just remember, it doesn't have to be complex. It doesn't have to be tons of stuff, right? I'm going to keep going, adding some stuff. I'll probably add some more frames, actually, because I do have lots of pages I want to show off. I feel like this space is missing something. Maybe it's just my need to have everything cluttered, uh, but I'm gonna try to add a little bit more. Again, simple is totally fine. Pay attention to how you have everything positioned. You don't want to have everything covered up and it, it kind of looks best if you just move everything to the back as you're layering them. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is great. Like you can just be finished. Again, I'm going to leave my link below for the templates, my email address below as well, because I would love to see what you come up with. Uh, if you want to link your creation below, I'll check it out. Or you can, like I said, email it to me. Make sure if you link your creation below that it's not a link where someone can edit your work. So make sure that you use the way that I do with sharing and then share as a template. Or if you have the free version of Canva, you could just share a screenshot uh, and then a link to that if you would like. One thing that I've seen others do, I haven't really utilized this yet, but I'm gonna add them in here just in case you want to, is adding arrows. This can point out a certain benefit or a special page or bonus that you're offering. With Canva's new curved text feature, it's really opened a lot of windows as far as designing these printables and creative mockups go. I'll show you how I'm going to use it in just a second. If you're unfamiliar with Canva, you can find these arrows under elements. Just type in the word arrow. 